What if the land you call home is also claimed by someone else? Welcome to the Israel-Palestine conflict. This isn't just a dispute over a piece of land, it's a multifaceted issue that has been brewing for a century, a knot of historical grievances, religious tensions, and political complexities. It's a story of two narratives, both deeply rooted in a shared geography, both laying claim to the same land. The Israel-Palestine conflict is a significant global issue that has repercussions far beyond its borders. Its influence extends to international politics, global security, human rights, and religious discourse. This conflict is a litmus test for diplomacy and international law, a challenge that has tested the mettle of world leaders for generations. But this isn't just about lines on a map or political chess, it's about people. It's about families who have lived on this land for generations, their lives intertwined with its history. It's about individuals who wake up every day under the shadow of this conflict, their futures uncertain. The complexities involved in this conflict are immense. It's not just about who gets what land and who doesn't. It's about national identities, about self-determination and survival. It's about justice and fairness, about rights and responsibilities. It's about historical wrongs and the quest for peace. Yet, despite these complexities or perhaps because of them, the Israel-Palestine conflict remains unresolved. It's a Gordian knot of geopolitics, a puzzle that has yet to be solved. So, how did we get here? What are the roots of this conflict? What are the narratives of the people involved and most importantly, is there a way forward? To answer these questions we'll need to delve into the history of this conflict to understand its origins and its evolution. We'll need to listen to the voices of those involved to understand their perspectives and their aspirations. We'll need to explore the potential paths to resolution to see if there's a way to untangle this knot. Let's unfold this complex tale from its roots. Our story begins in the late 19th century with the rise of two major national movements. In the heart of Europe, a political ideology called Zionism was taking shape. It was born out of the centuries-long suffering of the Jewish people who had been persecuted, expelled, and marginalized in various societies. The Zionist movement, led by visionaries like Theodor Herzl, sought to create a homeland for the Jews in Palestine, their ancestral land. Meanwhile, as the Ottoman Empire started to crumble, the Arab people of Palestine began to develop a sense of national identity. This was not just a reaction to the decline of the empire they were part of, but also a response to the growing influx of Jewish immigrants and the fear of losing their homeland. This gave rise to Palestinian nationalism. As time passed, both these movements grew stronger, each fueled by a deep sense of historical connection to the same land. The Zionists saw Palestine as the promised land, a place where they could finally live free from persecution. On the other hand, the Palestinians saw themselves as the rightful inhabitants of the land, having lived there for centuries. This collision of two peoples, each with their own narrative and claim to the same land, was not a simple dispute. It was a complex entanglement of history, identity, and sovereignty. And with the Balfour Declaration of 1917, where Britain expressed support for the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine, the tensions only escalated. The interwar period saw a massive increase in Jewish immigration to Palestine, further exacerbating the tensions. Riots, strikes, and violent confrontations became common, and it became increasingly clear that a peaceful coexistence was not on the horizon. With the end of World War II and the horrors of the Holocaust exposed, international sympathy for the Jewish cause increased. The United Nations proposed a partition plan in 1947, intending to create separate Jewish and Arab states within Palestine. However, this was rejected by the Palestinian Arabs and neighboring Arab states setting the stage for the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. The stage was set for a century-long conflict. Flash forward to 1917, when the British made a promise that would shape the Middle East. In the throes of the First World War, the British government issued the Balfour Declaration, a letter written by Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour to Lionel Walter Rothschild, a leader of the British Jewish community, it expressed Britain's support for the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine. But this wasn't a blank check. The declaration also stipulated that the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine should not be prejudiced. The Balfour Declaration paved the way for the British Mandate for Palestine, a period of British administration over the region following the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. The mandate, confirmed by the League of Nations in 1922, aimed to implement the Balfour Declaration, leading to an increased influx of Jewish immigrants into Palestine. 
But this influx wasn't welcomed by everyone. The local Arab population viewed the growing Jewish community and the British administration with increasing suspicion and resentment. They feared that their land, their culture and their way of life were under threat. This resentment was not baseless. The Jewish immigrants were not just coming to live in Palestine, they were coming to establish a Jewish state. Clashes between Jewish immigrants and Arab locals were not uncommon during the Mandate period. From strikes and riots to armed rebellions, the region was a cauldron of tension and conflict. British attempts to reconcile the two communities were unsuccessful, and the situation only worsened. By the late 1930s, the British began to back away from the Balfour Declaration. They issued a white paper in 1939, limiting Jewish immigration and proposing an independent Palestine governed jointly by Arabs and Jews. But it was too late, the seeds of conflict had been sown. As World War II loomed, these tensions reached a boiling point. The stage was set for a conflict that would shape the Middle East for the rest of the 20th century and beyond. 1947 marked a watershed moment in this conflict. The United Nations, in an attempt to resolve the ongoing strife, proposed a partition plan, dividing Palestine into two distinct territories, one for the Jewish people and another for the Arab population. The Jewish agency, representing the Jewish inhabitants of Palestine, accepted the plan, seeing it as an opportunity to realize their long-standing aspiration for a sovereign Jewish state. However, the Arab states, including Palestine's Arab population, rejected the proposal, fearing it would lead to the dispossession of the Palestinian Arabs. On May 14, 1948, the State of Israel was officially established. David Ben-Gurion, the executive head of the World Zionist Organization and the chairman of the Jewish Agency for Palestine, declared the independence of a new Jewish state in Eretz Israel, to be known as the State of Israel. This was a moment of triumph and joy for the Jewish people. However, for the Palestinians, the establishment of Israel was a catastrophe, or the Nakba, as it is known in Arabic. More than 700,000 Palestinians fled or were expelled from their homes during the 1948 Arab-Israeli War that ensued following Israel's declaration of independence. The war was a bitter struggle, with both sides suffering significant losses. The Arab states, initially confident of victory, were eventually defeated. By the time the armistice agreements were signed in 1949, Israel had expanded its territory beyond the original UN partition plan. The aftermath of the war and the Nakba resulted in a significant demographic shift. Israel began to welcome Jewish immigrants from around the world, while the Palestinians who had fled or were expelled during the war became refugees, many of whom and their descendants continue to live in refugee camps today. The birth of Israel and the Nakba not only changed the geopolitical landscape, but also deepened the divide between Israelis and Palestinians. What started as a disagreement over land, had escalated into a full-fledged conflict, characterized by a series of wars, uprisings and peace efforts, that continue to this day. The conflict was now more than a disagreement, it was a war. The following decades saw a series of wars and uprisings. In the late 60s, Tensions boiled over into what is now known as the Six-Day War. This conflict, which took place over half a dozen days in June 1967, saw Israel preemptively striking against Egypt, Syria and Jordan. The victory was swift and decisive, leaving Israel in control of territories such as the West Bank, Gaza Strip, Sinai Peninsula and Golan Heights. This territorial expansion, however, intensified the conflict as the occupied lands were home to a significant number of Palestinians. Fast forward to 1973, the Yom Kippur War, named so because it started on the Day of Atonement, the holiest day in Judaism, saw Egypt and Syria launch a surprise attack on Israel. Although Israel ultimately repelled the attack, the war shook its sense of invincibility and opened up possibilities for diplomatic negotiations. Yet the conflict was far from over. The late 20th century witnessed two significant uprisings, or intifadas. The first intifada starting in 1987, was a largely civilian uprising involving strikes, boycotts, and widespread civil disobedience. The second intifada beginning in 2000 was far more violent, marked by suicide bombings and military operations. Each of these events left deep scars on both sides. The wars resulted in a significant loss of life and made clear the high stakes of the conflict. The intifadas on the other hand, brought the conflict to the streets and homes of ordinary people, making it a part of daily life. They also highlighted the desperation and frustration felt by the Palestinians living under occupation. 
These events did more than just shape the political landscape of the region. They shifted perceptions, hardened attitudes, and fueled a cycle of fear and retaliation. The wars demonstrated the lengths to which each side would go to defend their claims, while the intifadas illustrated the human cost of the conflict. These events deepened the divide and fueled mutual distrust. Despite the bloodshed, there have been attempts at peace. Let's pivot to the unwavering determination of those who dared to envision harmony amidst the turmoil. In the early 90s, the world witnessed a glimmer of hope with the Oslo Accords. This set of agreements, signed by the leaders of Israel and the Palestine Liberation Organization, promised mutual recognition and aimed to resolve the conflict through the creation of a Palestinian self-governing authority. But why did this beacon of peace flicker and fade? The Accords were plagued by mutual distrust, political turmoil and a lack of clarity on core issues such as borders, settlements, and the status of Jerusalem. The turn of the century brought another substantial effort at peace, the Camp David Summit. Here, Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak and Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat came face to face under the mediation of U.S. President Bill Clinton. The summit aimed to address the unresolved issues from the Oslo Accords. However, the talks collapsed. The reasons? A lack of preparation, the absence of trust, and a significant gap in the expectations of both parties. The collapse of the Camp David summit led to a surge in violence, further pushing peace into the shadows. Throughout the years there have been numerous other peace initiatives, each with its own set of challenges and shortcomings. The Roadmap for Peace proposed by the Quartet on the Middle East in 2003, the Annapolis Conference in 2007, and the John Kerry-led peace talks in 2013 and 14, all aimed to resolve the conflict, yet each failed to do so. The reasons were often similar, mutual distrust, disagreement on core issues, and a lack of political will. In the end the peace remained elusive. But it's important to remember that the quest for peace isn't a series of isolated attempts. Each effort, each failure and each tiny step forward is part of an ongoing journey towards a resolution, a journey marked by resilience, hope, and the unwavering belief in the possibility of a peaceful coexistence. Today, the conflict remains unresolved, with both sides holding on to their narratives. The Israel-Palestine conflict continues to be a complex issue, shaped by decades of historical grievances, political complexities, and countless failed attempts at resolution. Let's delve into the current situation. One of the most contentious issues is the Israeli settlements in the West Bank. These communities built on lands captured by Israel during the Six-Day War in 1967 are viewed by many international entities as a violation of international law. The continued expansion of these settlements is seen by Palestinians as a major roadblock to peace and a two-state solution. And then there's Jerusalem. Both Israel and Palestine lay claim to this ancient city, rich in religious and historical significance. Israel considers it their undivided capital, while Palestinians envision East Jerusalem as the capital of their future state. This dispute over Jerusalem only adds more fuel to the already blazing fire of the conflict, and we cannot forget about the refugees. The plight of Palestinian refugees who were displaced during the wars and conflicts remains a deeply emotive issue. There are millions of registered Palestinian refugees scattered across the Middle East. Their right to return to their homes, a right enshrined in international law, is still a significant point of contention. In addition to these major issues, there are countless other hurdles to peace. There's the political divisions within the Palestinian leadership, the debate over Israel's security concerns, the impact of the broader regional geopolitics and the list goes on. Each side has its own narrative, its own interpretation of history, and its own vision for the future. These narratives are deeply entrenched and have been passed down through generations. They shape the way each side perceives the conflict and the potential solutions to it. In this intricate web of issues and narratives, finding a path to resolution seems like navigating through a labyrinth. But the hope for peace has not been extinguished. There are still voices on both sides advocating for dialogue, for understanding and for compromise. The path to resolution remains uncertain. But as the saying goes, where there's a will, there's a way. Let's hope that the will for peace prevails. So, where do we go from here? As we look down the road, there are several potential paths to resolution. Some advocate for a two-state solution, envisioning a peaceful coexistence of Israel and Palestine as independent sovereign nations. 
Others propose a one-state solution where all inhabitants share equal rights and responsibilities under a single government. Yet these solutions are not without their challenges and controversies. What's clear is that any resolution requires mutual understanding and compromise on both sides. It demands recognizing the pain and suffering that has been endured and looking beyond historical grievances towards a shared future. It involves acknowledging the realities on the ground and making tough decisions that may not satisfy everyone fully. In the end, it's not about who's right or wrong. It's about finding a way to coexist, a way that respects the rights of all individuals and fosters a sustainable peace in a land that has seen far too much conflict.